Let's return to our overlap header because there's more we can do with it, especially when you have the problem whereby you might have used a certain color for your logo or your menu and it works okay as you're scrolling down. But eventually you're going to get hit a point where you may have like a white container. And can you now see that the menu is invisible? We can't see the home up there and the logo as well. So could we substitute the logo and change the font colors of almost anything within our header as we scroll. We can do that. So let's go and have a look at this. Normally you would do this within your header template, but for the purpose of the course, I'm gonna use the overlap header that I created in a separate video. Let's have a look at the structure again of this header. We have a logo, we have the menu, and we had a button. The trick is to add in another logo or another SVG or another image, and you give it a class name. And what you're going to say from the get go is that one of them is invisible and it doesn't become visible until you've scrolled. We're going to go and duplicate this particular icon so we have two. If you can't see it on the screen, just go and refresh. Now, the very first icon, which had the white color text, I'm going to go to the advanced tab and I'm going to give this a class name. We're going to call it original underscore logo. And then the second one, I'm going to go and change the image or the icon. So this is what we started with for the overlap or what it originally looks like. And instead, I want it to switch to a black color because I'm going to change the background as well. So let's go and insert that. We go to the advanced tab, go to class, and I'll call this scroll underscore logo. Now, at the moment, you can see both on screen, but we will add in some CSS that will hide this one and then it will switch to hide this one after you have scrolled. Let's just go over to our WordPress menu and remind ourselves that this had the class name overlap. And in terms of our button in the advanced tab, we are using the white underscore button class. Remember that we did not set the text color for the menu here. We actually did it in our class system. Go to site settings and custom CSS. We can see that our nav menu normally would have been the primary color, but when we use the overlap class system, we are using the white color. We're not going to change these. We're going to leave them as they are. What we will do is add a scrolling effect to our header, and then we're going to add in some CSS to change that. Let's do this step by step. Click onto the container for your header, and this could be a header template. Go to motion effects, which is currently already set to be sticky at the top, and then add an effects onset. Let me explain. If we go and add in any CSS for a scrolling effect, it will activate instantly. The moment we scroll just one pixel, the change in color and the image or the logo will also occur. But I don't want it to occur straight away. I actually want it to occur after about 200 pixels of scrolling. So eventually when you get to somewhere around here, the effect kicks in. Then go to the custom CSS. And this is where we are going to drop in quite a bit of code. I wasn't lying, was I? Let me explain what a lot of this will do. Elemental sticky effects is the common CSS syntax you have to use if you are now going to inform Elemental or your style sheet of changes as you are scrolling. So this is kind of a bit of a constant. I'm now saying that this particular container called overlap header, after you have scrolled 200 pixel, and I don't need to state the 200 pixel here because it's already in the motion effects and the effects onset, I want the color to change from a transparent color to become soft gray. Now, if you recall, we didn't actually set any color for the overlap header. Let's go back to the style sheet and you'll see here there is no color there. So I'm informing it that I want the background to become soft gray. And I've then added transition 0.5. That means that when it transitions and changes color, I don't want it to be like an instant change. I want it to just gradually happen. 0.5 seconds is pretty good. If you want it to be quicker, go for a 0.3. If you want it to be slower, go for a 0.8. But you'll get an idea for what works for you as you test it out. Now, the second part of the code, it says here that dot scroll logo. So that is the second logo. And did you notice the logo actually disappeared? Because that's exactly what this code is doing. Let me go and get rid of that. The copied logo has now returned. So from the get go, I want the scroll underscore logo, the copy to not be visible. 
When you are then scrolling Elemental Sticky Effects, the scroll logo now becomes visible. Now you don't have to pop in the max width or the width here because normally if you've duplicated one you already originally used, it should cover it. If you ever found, find that it jumps a little bit, go and pop back in whatever was the size you originally set when you created this SVG. And as a reminder, if we click on this logo and go to style, you can see 23 pixel was the size I'd originally added. So from the start, the scroll logo is not displayed, but then as you scroll, it will then become visible. And again, we have a transition of 0.5 seconds. The original logo does the complete opposite. It goes from being displayed to becoming a display none. I don't need to say it has to be visible because it would already do that by default. But again, the elemental sticky effects, when that kicks in and you hit the 200 pixel, I now want the original logo, which is the very first one that you can see now. I do not want that to be displayed. I'm now going to touch the nav menu because I've got dot overlap. That is what our menus class system is. Based on our site settings, the nav menu is set to be a white font. But when you have scrolled 200 pixels, the nav menu, which has the overlap class system, the color of the font will now go to the dark color, which was the primary. And again, I've added in a bit of transition here for the font size, the line height, and anything like that. This wasn't really needed if I'm honest, because I'm only actually doing it based on the color. But if you were gonna do something a little bit clever, whereby maybe your menu starts at say a font size of 1.5 REM. And as you scroll, you now wanted it to go to a different size. You could drop that in here. Now the next part is actually for when we get to the mobile. So we're gonna come back to this part of the code in a moment. Let's now just have a look at this overlap header. So when the page is first loaded, you've got this overlap header and we've got a white font for the menu, etc. And as I scroll down and I hit my 200 pixel point, the logo changes. Look, we go from white to black and the background color goes from a transparent to the soft gray. And look at that menu. It goes from white to black as well. And that will remain at the top even as we scroll past the container to a new one. So that's a great way of how you can add a bit of a scrolling effect when you've got an overlap, but all of a sudden it doesn't look great when you have a conflicting color or something where it is masked by further containers. But what about on the mobile? I will get rid of this code here. And if you keep your eye on the mobile toggle, as we scroll down, can you see we have this gray background up here and it still maintains the white. We need that to change. Let's go and pop in that code again. So here, overlap, which is the menu, and then elemental menu toggle. The SVG for this is currently set to be white. Originally for our menu, if we go to the style tab, we had set some colors. What we need to do is remove those. So go in and remove any existing color because we're all gonna do it via the CSS. And this might feel like a complicated stage or a way of building, but if you are ever going to use the overlap and you don't need to follow what I'm showing you here, you don't have to use an overlap and then a transition change with your CSS or a scrolling effect. But hopefully if you ever do, you can return back to this part of the tutorial to help yourself out. Go to the advanced tab, go to the CSS, and now we are assigning the color. So if I was to go here, and change this to be FF0050, you'll see that a different color kicks in. So we are setting it here, because if you set it in your style tab, trying to get these to work, it doesn't always work properly. So you need to assign the pre-color and the post-color here. Then when the elemental sticky effects occurs as you scroll, the same class overlap elemental menu toggle, the color will now switch to this. But instead of using a black color, we're gonna use our primary color. Let's go and drop that in. There we go. So we again using the colors from our class system and we have a transition. And over here, whether you scroll or do not scroll, I want the background for this to be fully transparent because before we were getting a background color. Let me show you if I go and add in some hex code, you can see what we get now. So let's go and change that to be FFF six times and double O. That is fully transparent. 
and you can see it kicking in. We scroll down and before we get to the wording, it changes. If you feel that the 200 is too slow with regards to the mobile and you want it to happen quicker, while you're on the mobile view, go to the effects onset and you can add in a different value. So I could change this to be 100 for the mobile. So on the desktop, after we scroll 200 pixel, it's gonna kick in. And if we go to the mobile, it will kick in a lot quicker. There's so much you can do with a little bit of extra CSS rather than relying on other third-party plugins or very complicated code.